Good morning, everyone. How are you? Oh, I've just noticed that the collar of my shirt is going all a bit funny because of the colour of it and the colour of my background. So sorry if that's distracting you. Anyway, how are you all? I hope you're well. Um, yesterday's assembly, lots of you have spoken to me about it. Lots of you have said that you would like to help in the woods to maintain the woodland code. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you till the end of this week to let me know if you want to do it. And... Um, and then I will announce next week uh, who will be helping me in the woods. I've had lots of people from Bubble C, especially the older children from Bubble C. If you're in reception or year one or year two and you would like to help me, please let me know as well because I'll need help from you too. Um, today's assembly is going to be about the woods and it's going to be about responsibility. There it is. But it's also about this. Now, it might be a little while since you have had a look at this thing behind me. This is all about how we behave in our school. And I wanted to talk to you about the bits just above my head there, our rules. Now, we've only got three rules in our school because we wanted to keep it really simple. And the rules that we've got are based on our values, which you know so well. So our rules are that you need to show respect in everything that you do. You need to show integrity, which is making the right choice. And you need to show excellence, which is doing your very best all of the time. And what I would like to, you to do today is to think how you can show excellence when you are following the Woodland Code. So... I'm going to read you a book this morning which talks about an animal in the woods or in a forest and it talks about how that animal tried to do something but it went a bit wrong. But whilst I'm, talking, whilst I'm reading you the book and at the end when we look at the Woodland Code again, I want you to think about how you can use the woods excellently. So, how could you make sure that you are allowing the plants and the wildlife to grow excellently. You could keep off the middle area, but is there something more you could do? How could you make sure that we're allowing the woods to be a safe and slow zone for everyone? You could walk, but is there something more you could do? Can you go a step further to show excellence in the way that you play? Hmm, have a little think. Okay, I'm going to start reading you the story now. The story is called Tidy. I think some of you will already know the story, and I know that year three you'll be getting uh, you'll be getting to know the story even better next week. Here we have the end papers, and here I imagine this is going to be our main character because we've been introduced to him really early on, haven't we? Let's have a look. Deep in a forest lived a badger called Pete, who tidied and cleaned and kept everything neat. Sorry, I'm just making myself smaller. He tidied the flowers by checking each patch and snipping off any that didn't quite match. He tidied the fox by grooming his fur. He untangled each knot, each twig and each burr. He tidied the birds from the big to the small. He brushed by brushing their beaks and bathing them all. Hmm. Sounds like Pete is an excellent tidier. He picked up stray sticks and swept and he rubbed. He polished the rocks and he scoured and he scrubbed. So when a leaf fell, well. Pete tidied up. But he still wasn't happy. Now the trees looked bare and scrappy. And so, to make it all look neat, Pete undertook a mighty feat. He dug up every single tree. But then it rained and there was a flood. And afterwards, a lot of mud. Pete called in the digger, he called in the mixer, he called in the concrete, the rakers, the fixers. No mud, no leaves, no mess, no trees. Perfectly tidy and perfectly neat. This forest is practically perfect, said Pete. 
I'm not so sure that Pete's made it perfect. I'm not so sure that it's a forest anymore. I'm hungry, he thought. I deserve a treat. So he hunted for something to eat. But the beetles and worms that he usually found were under the concrete, deep in the ground. So Pete decided to go home instead. If he couldn't have dinner, he'd go straight to bed. But when he arrived and he took out his key, there wasn't a door where the door used to be. Later that night, Pete tossed and he turned, his belly was empty, it rumbled and churned. As he lay in his mixer, wide, wide awake, he started to think, I've made a mistake. So? The very next morning, when it got light, he set about trying to put everything right. Then the animals came, from the strong to the weak. They lent him a paw, a claw, or a beak. They put everything back as it had always been, but maybe less ordered and not quite as clean. And Pete, well, he promised to, keep, uh, to tidy up less. But if he succeeded, was anyone's guess. That's the book. What a beautiful book. Right, what I'd like to do, I've read it all in one go. I've read it quite quickly because it's got rhyme and couplets. I thought you'd like to hear it all in one go. But let's go back and look at some of the important pages. So, Pete, here he is. And Pete is trying here to be excellent. I think he's trying to make things as tidy as they can be. But actually, we know from yesterday's story, Wild, that sometimes you can't tame something that needs to be wild. For example, perhaps we're better off not chopping out the flowers that don't look like they fit. Perhaps we're better leaving our areas to grow wildly. But Pete's trying to be excellent. He's trying to do the right thing. Picking up sticks, that seems like a good idea. But here, Pete gets a little bit annoyed because the leaves are falling. And in this bit, lots of leaves are falling. I wonder if our younger children in reception in year one and year two could have a chat in their class about what time of year it might be on this page and how they would know what clues are there in these pictures that it's a particular time of year. So here, Pete's trying his best to make things tidy, but actually, digging up trees is probably not the best idea. And by digging up those trees, Pete's actually made a bit of a mistake, hasn't he? And then he makes another mistake here, because he puts concrete on the forest. Now, that's not what we want to do in our woods, is it? We want our woods to be wild, like in the story yesterday. So, Pete learns from his mistake, and Pete rewilds the area. And that's what we need to do in our woods. We need to make sure we're rewilding and letting the plants grow. And the woodland code that Callum helped me uh, improve and that Mr Knowles started to make. The Woodland Code should help us to let our woods be wild. I hope that you've had a think throughout this assembly how you can be excellent when you're in the woods, how you can show excellence in the way that you play and in the way that you look after the woods. And what I'm going to be looking for and what Callum will be looking for and what some of my other helpers will start to look for is not only who's keeping these rules but who is being excellent in the way that they're doing it. Who is showing excellence in the way that they use the woods. Okay, I think that's probably about enough from me. I hope you have a lovely day. Um, I hope you enjoy playing uh, in the woods or in the mugger or wherever you play this morning. And I'll be out there looking for excellence in our play. Bye bye.